Senator Waters. Thank you, Chair. Again, folks. Um, first of all, some questions about the Waratah coal approval in the Galilee Basin. When that approval was given, was the department aware that one of Mr Palmer's other companies, Queensland Nickel um, Pty Ltd, had been involved in substantial controversy, um, controversy in dumping toxic waste in the Great Barrier Reef without permission on two occasions? Um, Senator, we were aware. We were. Yes, okay. And was the department or the minister also <coughs> aware that the Queensland Environment Department had placed an environmental protection order against Waratah Coal in relation to ex um, exploration drilling holes on that same site? Is the minister or the department aware of that when the minister approved that coal mine? Uh, Senator, I'm just going to ask uh, Mr. Gaddies to come to the table who's in charge of compliance and enforcement. Thanks. Hello. Um, Hello. Yes, we were aware that that had occurred. We had a case that we investigated. We didn't deem that it was a significant impact that warranted further investigation. And as a part of that case and part of looking into that matter, we, we did establish that the Queensland Government had put a protection order over Warrantuck. And did you advise the Minister of that EPO? Um, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't prepare those briefs. So it is standard practice, uh, Senator, that whenever we're briefing uh, the minister on uh, an EPPC decision, we will include a uh, brief of the proponent's environmental uh, history. Thank you. That goes to my next question. What criteria does the department use to assess whether a proponent is a fit and proper person as per the test under the EPPC Act, particularly as regards their environmental history? We, we would report any of the non-compliances that we have as a part of that process um, and also anything that we're aware of from a state basis when, when requested. I'm not sure how that gets fed into the advice. Of the well, my question goes to what criteria you use to determine whether a person is a fit and proper person to hold an EPBC approval as you're required to determine under the Act. Right. So uh, I think um, what Mr. Gaddis was pointing out was there's a, a couple of places where we, we look explicitly, which would be, are there any uh, particular compliance or enforcement actions that have been undertaken against the individual or his, his entity? Um, and secondly, uh, any uh, knowledge that we would have with respect to uh, state uh, level actions. But what I would uh, suggest, uh, Senator, is to make sure that we give you as fulsome an answer as possible. Uh, we can come back to you with a, a more detailed explanation of how that's taken into account. Thank you. I'd appreciate that because they seem to be fairly gross breaches. And if that doesn't meet the criteria, I'm interested in what those criteria are. So thanks um, for taking that on notice.